Hello, my name is John Rose, and in this video, I'd like to take a closer look at a book written by Anthony Robbins called Awaken the Giant Within. Now, this book is uh, an impressive book, and I'm sure I have quite a few Anthony Robbins fans that are watching my videos. And for those of you who don't know who he is, I'm sure he'll be a fan of yours pretty soon because uh, he's the real deal. There's just no question about it. I'll never forget hearing about how he was in high school and how he had already read 600 books and he wanted to help people and share this knowledge. And, and that tells you a lot about his soul, as Edgar Casey points out, that destiny or karma depends upon what the soul has done about what it's become aware of. Anthony Robbins found these great books and had great knowledge of how to help people and he wanted to share it. So that tells me a lot about his personality, not just about his soul, but also about how he perceives reality or how he uses energy. And I know that because he uses it the same way I use it. We both are divergent personalities. I explain how these personalities work based on quantum physics in one of my other videos called Know Thyself and how these personality traits can be used to our benefit once we understand them. But the point about Anthony Robbins and myself is our two main personality strengths out of the four main characteristics. Reds act, they do things quickly. Yellows talk, they do things friendly. Blue people think, they do things creatively. Green people analyze, they do things carefully. So blue yellows, yellow blues are divergent personalities. Love knowledge, love sharing it, love talking about it. These personality types make the best teachers. And it's obvious when you got a good teacher, right? Because a good teacher doesn't just give you the information, they, they get you to apply it, they motivate you. That's the, that, again, knowledge is worthless unless you apply it. So we've ha all had various types of teachers throughout our lives, and many of them just didn't have the right personality to enjoy what they're doing so they'd do a better job at it. Remember the performance equation, which is what this personality test is all about, is based on two main factors, willingness and ableness. The more willing and able, the better you're gonna do, right? So you wanna do something that you love to do. And divergent personalities love to teach. And if you find valuable knowledge, how can you keep it a secret? It, 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 again, I guess it just depends on our soul. I don't know. I can't understand why people can find this knowledge and not wanna go around doing this the rest of our lives. So we don't wanna just awaken the giant within us. We wanna awaken our whole species up because we are the giant on this planet and we got little bitty ants uh grasshoppers if you compare it to that movie control us we have the majority we have the numbers but we don't have the knowledge and that's what they're keeping away from us so knowledge is powerful and in anthony robbins book he gives us a lot of knowledge i analyze books and i i write marginal notes and cross-reference pages and and write the best sentences on on the top of the pages and, and if it's a really good book like Anthony Robbins, I'll, I'll have my own separate notes, which is what I did with Anthony Robbins. And I realized he has so many lists of this and that, five of these, three of, the, three of these, 10 of those. I said, I need to put all these in one spot so I can look at them. So I made a list of my own, of, of his list. There are 25 lists in his book. Uh, 119 pieces are in those uh, 25 puzzles. Uh, so there's 25 main lists he has, or I call them puzzles, and there's 119 pieces all together that fit into those puzzles. And the next thing I did with his book is I wanted to, well, I, this is what I do to all of my books, I kind of code them mathematically so I can take all this great knowledge and arrange it in a way that makes more sense to me. Um, I like to do that with knowledge. In fact, I like to think of it like if, if there's a story, like a book you want to tell somebody, I like to think of it as a train. And you got all these railroad carts. And now the key is to arrange those carts in the right sequence so that you can get on board and go from one railroad cart to the next, and each cart will lead to the next. And you can't go to some boxes unless you've been to the other boxes. So knowledge has to be arranged, in my mind, in a special sequence. Um, and, and, it, and that's how books should be arranged, right? Chapter one, chapter two. Find a book that does that, you're not gonna find too many that can do that. Uh, so what I did with Anthony Robbins' books is, is I took that book, I took all the points that he was making, and I created a 29-step process to make it simple for me to understand and for everyone to understand. And the essence of his book is all about, uh, about how to solve problems. And to solve our problems, according to Anthony Robbins, it all begins 
by changing what we do, changing our, our, our behavior, changing our lifestyle choices. So he's talking about the second stage of knowledge in my book. This is the action stage. Remember Buddhism, Eightfold Path. First step, you must clearly see what's wrong. Second step, decide to be cured. That's the take action box. So what Anthony Robbins is, do, is saying, is saying like, look, if we gotta solve our problems, we gotta change what we're doing. So that's the first step, change our lifestyle, change our behavior. And then he says to change our behavior, we have to change our beliefs and our emotions. So that's step two and step three. To change our beliefs, there are seven things he says we must change. To change our emotions, there are three things he says we must change. He says we must change our physical state, mental state, and we can use technology. And there's five ways to change our physical state, five ways to change our mental state, and there are six steps to this technology that he uses. So there's seven, five, five, and six, 16, seven, 23, and then there are the first three steps, and then there are the three ways. So that's 29 steps altogether. So let's start at the very beginning. The very first thing we gotta do is change our belief system. And this is what I say over and over and over again. Our brains have been bombarded with bullshit, and we gotta get better knowledge. So how does that begin? Well, it begins by the first step is we change our values. That's the first thing we must do to change our beliefs, according to Anthony Robbins. What happens when we change our values? Well, we start asking better questions, so that's the second step. And when we ask better questions, what happens to us? We end up having new experiences. Never thought about that before. Thought about it, I did it. So now the new experience is number three. Now what happens with new experiences? We go to number four, new references. Oh my God, how many times do I talk about references? That's a huge piece to my puzzle. And I understand why. Because we have way too many references currently that support our current belief system and our current way of life. And there's no way we can challenge all those old references except with a brand new reference. And that's where the first of my three-step process comes into play, which of course is down in the description box down below. But going back to the new reference, what happens according to Anthony Robbins once we have these new references? Well, now we have a new identity. And this, what's interesting about an identity is we can change overnight what we've been trying to change forever if we simply change our identity. I'm a health nut and health nuts don't do that. So that's a powerful weapon we can use to help us deal with all of our obstacles. The next thing would be convictions. Now, a conviction is, well, if, we, if we compare our beliefs to possessions, a conviction is simply a value possession. So one of the best things we can do to overcome all the obstacles we're up against is to change a belief to a conviction. It's valuable. I got a little five cent wooden pencil over here, that's a belief. I've got a five million dollar house. That's a valuable possession. We gotta elevate that pencil to a, a five million dollar house. We gotta understand the power of our thoughts and our beliefs. And when we do that, we'll have a whole new set of rules. So those are the seven things according to Anthony Robbins. Once again, we start off by changing our values. We have new questions, new experiences, new references, a new identity, new convictions, new rules. I don't do that anymore. Got to change my beliefs and my emotions. Three ways to change our emotions according to Anthony Robbins. Number one, physical state. Five things to change our physical state. Number one is food. Let me digress for a moment. In his other book, Unlimited Power, he talks about in chapter 10, climbing the ladder of success. Can't climb that ladder unless we have the energy and the fuel. And that's when he said, I changed my values. I was overweight, living in a little bitty efficiency apartment, changed my values. And when I got a book, and it was by an expert, medical expert, do this, do this, do this. So he started doing that, but then he saw another book, and he said, if you do this, it's gonna kill you. And another book, they all disagreed. And they all had these credentials and what he came to, what he concluded, his conclusion was, well, I don't want to find someone with credentials. I want to find someone who gets results. Another monarch. And that's when he found T.C. Fry up in Austin. He took the, the, the science, the, the natural hygiene course, the science of health course. Uh, and actually, uh, he took it at the same time Harvey and Marilyn Diamond took this, uh, this course. And of course, they wrote the book, Fit for Life, one of the best-selling books on diet and nutrition ever, sold 12 million copies back in the 80s. And chapter two was natural hygiene. So Anthony Robbins embraced this way of life. 
came up with six guidelines that we must follow that are all basically centering around the natural hygiene principles of eating water-rich foods and food combining and periodic fasting and uh, systematic under-eating. And, and um, what was really interesting is at the top of his list, he said, if you only do one of these, do this one. It's the breathing exercise, which comes to number two in the five things we have to do according to Anthony Robbins. Number one, change our food. Number two, change our breathing. Powerful, powerful, powerful. I did a, a video on deep breathing and visualizations. You can go to my YouTube channel and you can find that video. So this is a very powerful thing we can do. In fact, I'll never forget watching these commercials on TV a long, long time ago, long before I was even into this. And the woman doing the infomercial caught my attention because when she said she was 52, I couldn't believe it because she was gorgeous and looked like she was no more 25 and had blonde hair all the way down to her, her, uh, down to her waist and was just a, a, a picture of health. And I never knew what she was promoting back then, but I found out later it was this breathing exercise where you learn how to breathe through the diaphragm. So number one, change your food. Number two, change your breathing. Number three, change your posture. Come on, man. remember those transverse abdominal muscles I told you about? Tighten those transverse abs, straighten out your back. Good posture. And that kind of reminds me of a story when I was at a girlfriend's parents' house a while back, many years back, and, uh, and her dad was reading a, a newspaper and saw a cartoon and gave it to his wife, and, and his wife goes, I don't get it. He gave it to his daughter, a uh, gal I was dating, and uh, she goes, I don't get it. And he gave it to me, and I kind of chuckled, and I, I saw the humor in it, and he sort of tested me. He goes, well, what, what, what's, what's the punchline? Why don't these guys get it? And, of course, the, the punchline had to do with uh, the, the cartoon itself in that uh, there was an ad for people who were depressed, but it was on the sidewalk. In other words, people who were depressed were, had their heads down. So posture, very important. Um, the women didn't get it because they were a little on the depressed side, uh, I guess. Uh, in fact, uh, I tried my hardest to help this gal, and it was, uh, and and she had had she actually had been given drugs as a child that damaged her brain, that ruined her for life. That's why I get so infuriated with the medical system using poisons to somehow solve our problems and then disable us for life. This woman's ruined for life. She'll never be able to ex experience any type of happiness ever because they messed up the dopamine receptor sites in her, in, her, in her brain by giving her neuroleptic drugs for a condition that was probably related to her thyroid. Um, but I digress, posture is important. Uh, so number one, we got food. Food for food, posture, or food breathing, posture, then facial expressions. That's powerful in itself. I remember reading this a long time ago that when we're happy, we smile, but when we smile, we're happy. I remember when I read that, I set my watch to buzz every hour and every time it buzzed, I'd smile. <laughs> and that was working great for, for about a week or so. And then finally, oh, no, it's buzzing again. Uh, but anyway, there's a lot to be said about being happy. Uh, a big smile is my default to go to when I don't know what else to do. When in doubt, get happy. <laughs> so you know, we're about as happy as we make up our minds, as Abraham Lincoln once said. So that's very important. And then the last thing he said, number five, was patterns of movement. And this is so funny because he recommends going out and skipping. Think about this. When's the last time you've gone out and you went out there and you started skipping around? And I guarantee you, you start doing this, and I already got a big smile on my face. It makes you smile. And everybody watching is going to put a smile on their face too. So get out there and skip around and have fun. So we got to change our physical state. Then we can change uh, our mental state, our mental focus. And he starts off with, guess what? Questions. So that's the third time he goes to questions. Questions are how our brains think. It was chapter eight in his book. I devoted a whole chapter to it. Questions are the answers. So we can use this to help control what we think. And this will actually lead to the third. Actually, this will be the, the third time will be in the next section where he also talks about uh, using pain inducing questions. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So we start off with questions, number one. Then words, once again, words are important. You gotta choose your words better. There's always a better word to describe what you're experiencing. Uh, instead of saying you're, uh, you're frustrated, you're overwhelmed, say I'm challenged. Find a better word to describe what you're doing, which goes to the next one, metaphors. Find a better metaphor. And then he talks about submodalities to help change our mental focus, which he also talks about in the technology. Uh, and then the last thing, guess what he, he uses for number five? Identity, so he's using identity again. We can change our identity and in an instant become a whole different person. So that would be the first two things we have to do for the emotions. And the third thing he has would be to use technology 
to make this work. Number one is we must decide what we want. Hey, that goes back to Buddha, right? Decide, decide, take action. That's the whole thing about these 29 steps. It's in the second stage of knowledge. That's our action box. This is our lifestyle choices. So first thing to use this technology, neural associative conditioning, which used to be called neuro linguistic programming, is to decide what you want. The third thing is to use leverage. And what do we use for leverage? Pleasure and pain. This is where you can come up with a list of pain inducing questions. So I always encourage my students when they start off on this journey, if I can tell that they might not have the best of attitude or if they're struggling and they're starting to crave things, I say, look, come up with a list of pain inducing questions that are personal to you, that will strike a nerve. You know, if I eat this, will I be able to see my great grandchild's graduation or whatever? Find things that are meaningful to you and, and, and use the pleasure and pain because that's determines everything we do, right? We always, you know, everything we do is to change the way we feel. We're always pursuing the pleasure, trying to avoid the pain. So we can use that to get leverage. The third thing he says to do in this technology is to scramble the pattern, interrupt the system, inter interrupt the signals, change the sensations that we're linking to, to, our, to, the, to, the, our, our, to the different sensations in our lives. So um, if we put something we like up in the top left corner and it's a beer and something we don't like in the bottom left corner that's a carrot juice, just switch it around. And he goes into, again, how to change the, the modalities. And then the next thing he says to do is to find a role model. And this is so important. If, you know, we need to find out what not to do, but there's a lot of people out there who don't know what to do when they do this, and they act like there's something wrong with the diet when they don't understand that their body may have been damaged or they completely did it wrong. Why am I successful? Why would I be a role model? I'm successful for a very simple reason. I get plenty of fresh air, I get plenty of sunshine, I get plenty of exercise, I get plenty of sleep, I try, <laughs> but I eat a raw vegan diet. I do the best I can. And I didn't start out this way. I just kept every year getting better and better and better and better. So that's number four. Number five, we condition this, we do it over and over, and finally we test it and see if we get the results that we're looking for. So those are, that's Awaken the Giant within, in a nutshell, 29 steps. And it all has to do with changing our beliefs and changing our emotions. To change our emotions, change our physical state, change your food, change your mental state, ask better questions. How do you do that? Change your values. And then we can use the technology if we like. But the main thing is we got to make a decision and do it. They say that's the hardest part of any journey is deciding to do it. And I know that to be true. Once we decide to do something, it gets easy, 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 easy. And the sad thing about doing what we need to do is most of us don't know what to expect. So when we use Bernoulli, Bernoulli's formula, we, where, where the expected value uh, of, of doing something equals the value of doing it times the odds of doing it, most of us don't think we can do it. And a lot of us don't believe that there's really true value to it. But I'm telling you, my friends, you got to do it to understand it. Make the decision today if you haven't done it. Go down below and listen to the Dr. Robe interview and listen to this man on day 21 when I was coaching him. And watch the Deborah Duncan show and watch the transformation these people go through. And then go to my seminar and do the juice fast if it's time for you to do it. If you've been eating raw food for a decade, why would you do it? Well, we live in a toxic world. I do this once a year for several reasons. One is because I know I live in a toxic world. I know it's it, that that in nature, we're supposed to be fasting every now and then. We're not supposed to have access to refrigerators. Although, if we had our act together, I can't imagine we'd ever have a, a, a time of famine. I just can't, I can't even imagine it, because I understand what it'd be like if everyone wasn't making mistakes and was connected, and they knew that they had a, a, a simple job every day, eat the food they're supposed to eat, take the seed, go plant it somewhere, let it grow, and if we did that, there could be catastrophes, there could be droughts, so there could be famines. But regardless, the things have changed. We don't live in an ideal world anymore. Our ideal, ideal diet not, doesn't even satisfy all of our needs. And then people use that as an excuse not to do it, saying, well, you don't get the B12, you don't get the vitamin D. It's not our ideal diet. Yes, it is, only in an ideal world. It's not ideal anymore. The world's been damaged, we've been damaged, we have another group of needs. So we got to satisfy both groups of needs. And as long as you're correcting five main mistakes, that's the main thing we have to do. Remember, there are three ways to correct five main mistakes. 
They're causing most of our problems. And a lot of people say, oh, John, this can't be a, a solution because we can't feed the world with raw food. Have you ever thought about supply and demand? <laughs> Think about supply and demand for a moment. If the world demands raw food, you don't think we can supply it? You haven't thought about that, have you? Of course not. I know most of you people don't think about the things I think about it. That's why it's challenging for me when I read these comments from people who haven't given this any thought at all and they're trying to tell me what I don't understand. You haven't thought about this? <laughs> oh, yes, I have, my friend. And there's a way around that. When we want it, we'll produce it. The idea that we can't feed everybody with a raw food diet is thoughtless. You hadn't thought it out. Maybe you didn't take economics in college like I did. I had to take it two semesters. Just like business law, I had to take it two semesters. Even though my degree is in, even though I have the ultimate degree in science, I had to take some business classes because my, my degree in science has to do with the science of money. And it's kind of funny when I reflect back because I really thought I wasted what gift I realized I had with connecting dots by going into accounting. But yet, accounting is a degree in two value logic. We use polar, oppos polar opposites, debits and credits. We use ordered pairs, that's a spreadsheet. In fact, once I created my special teaching tool, I looked at it, I go, oh my God, that's a condensed spreadsheet. And yet I didn't start off with that. I worked backwards into it. I started with T accounts. I went to quadrant systems. I created two quadrant systems. I interconnected them. And what I got is exactly what I was taught in school to do when you have a beginning period in business where you have the beginning of the month, you have the activity, and you have the end of the month. And then what happens at the end of the month? It becomes the next beginning of the, of the next month, which explains the wormholes that I try to explain in my system. But now I realize, my God, it's, I didn't even realize what I was doing. But people with, with, with degrees in accounting know exactly what I'm saying. That, that all I've done with my special teaching tool that has three stages of knowledge, I have a beginning and an end, but in the middle, in accounting, we have quite a few sections in the middle. We've got cash disbursements journals, cash receipts journals, and, and adjusting journal entries. But we have a beginning period, a lot of activity, and then an ending period. Well, that's what the three stages of knowledge have to do with. It starts with our belief system, and this is what Anthony Robbins is saying. We've got to change our values. We've got to start asking some better questions. You need some new experiences. You need that brand new reference. You need to connect the fourth. You need to do the 41-45 connection. 41 is a juice fast. And I say this. I said this in one of my other videos I taped last year. We've got to complete the 41-45 connection. We've got to complete the positive knowledge loop. By doing 41, in my, which I labeled 41, that's a juice fast. When we do that, we correct the five main mistakes that are pieces 95 to 99. Instead of being in the negative B box, now we're in the plus B box where we're correcting those mistakes 75 to 79. And when we do that, guess what? We end up in paradise as opposed to the dark ages where we got all these problems that are within our control. It's senseless. And the solution isn't a starch solution. Mistakes are not solutions. Interestingly, I looked at my recommended videos this morning and I was started to watch, I almost finished it all but maybe the last two minutes, a radio interview of John Kohler with uh, Dr. Joel Furman about how starch is not the solution. So I'm going to upload or uh, pass that on to my other video uh, where I'm trying to point out to people that there's a better solution. We can do better than a starch solution. And, and I really came at the conflict angle stage at this. And I'm getting a lot of thumbs down on that one video where I say John McDougall's a fool because everybody thinks I'm referring to him as a chump. No, he's been tricked. He's, a f he's been fooled. We've all been fooled. It's not an insult to call someone a fool anymore than it's an insult to call someone ignorant. The only people who get insulted when you call them ignorant are the ones who think you mean stupid. And they have such a small circle in their little box of knowledge that they don't know they don't know. And it really is an insult to them to call them ignorant. But these aren't insults. And I did it on purpose because I know we live in a sick world and all you guys want to listen to is conflict. Some of my best videos aren't getting any hits because there's, there's no conflict involved. Of course, most, I'm talking about a lot of my videos before I had any subscribers. I'm, I'm, I'm finally seeing how this darn YouTube channel works. In fact, I didn't even know I had a special comment section where I can look at all comments at one time. So I'm going to be able to handle your comments a lot better 
in the future. I've been having to go to each video before. I didn't know that I had a, a page that did them all <laughs> until yesterday. I'm going, yeah, man, this is going to make it a lot easier to go through and, and, uh, and, 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 and answer you guys' questions. Um, and I will be doing some question and answer videos uh, to help, uh, help us on our journey. Now, remember, a lot of people are going to experience a lot of things while they're going through this process. I'm going to have a lot of questions thrown at me. And I can't answer most of them because I don't know anything about you. I don't know anything about you. I don't know what to say when you have this without knowing what you've been doing your entire life. So there are some general answers I can give to people, but then it requires me to give it a long, elaborate you know, answer that you know, doesn't, may not even answer your question. But it's... Uh, but anyway, what I'm seeing already is that some, I got some great posters on here, great commenters that are coming to on my behalf and answering questions and you're doing a great job. Uh, I really want to thank you all for doing that. Anyway, the point here that we got we to gotta come to is that the decision is the hardest part. All we have to do is decide to do it. All we got to do is change our values. All we got to do is have that brand new reference. And of all the references that we can have, the juice fast is number one because we see results about 10 times faster. And the best thing about it is when you do it, you're in for a treat. <laughs>